Hello everyone. <clears throat> so today we are going to start the practice session. Every week we'll have one practice session and in the practice sessions, we'll try to directly observe the reality that we are discussing. So going by the title of the course also, we are discussing the reality about the human being, the nature and the entire existence and also trying to see the role of human being in this existence. So you are getting some proposals through the courses. You already have done UHV2 and now you are doing UHV3 and you are getting some insight about the existence of human being, nature and the submergence of nature in space. But to see it directly, some practice is required. So what we are going to do in the practice sessions, we are going to share certain things as steps for exercises where you can be able to see the reality starting from the self. So primarily we are going to have two exercises here in the practice sessions. One is exercise one and the other is exercise two. In exercise one, we are trying to observe the self. So the consciousness is observing the self. The consciousness is observing the consciousness. And in exercise two, we are trying to observe the body and the interaction between the self and the body. And as body is material, consciousness is observing the material. And if you see in the nature, there are only two kinds of units, consciousness and material. So we'll try to understand the consciousness as well as material through these two exercises. And there's another exercise where we try to observe the submergence of nature in space. So that we'll just touch upon towards the last step of exercise two. Thus, there are seven steps in exercise one and seven steps in exercise two. We'll go over the steps one by one. And what is expected from you is that you listen to what is being said here and then practice it by yourself. You can take out some time from your daily routine to observe the things that are being said here in the practice sessions. So this is an introduction to the exercises that we're going to do in this course, exercises one and two. And here you can see that we are doing these exercises to develop ourselves. And as we proceed, we'll see that essentially in the whole nature, what is required to be developed is the self, the consciousness. And developing the consciousness essentially means awakening to the higher activities of the self. So we are trying to develop understanding. We are trying to develop the higher activities of the self. And in this process, we will see that our sanskars also get purified. So we might have accumulated our desire, thought and expectation, isn't it? And we need to purify it and we are going to do that also in the process. So we can have different targets, like one target could be of living, for which we require merely physical facilities. But if you want to live with fulfillment, then we require relationship. And if you want to live with continuous fulfillment, then we require right understanding. So for living with continuous fulfillment, that is continuous happiness, we are doing these exercises so that we are able to ensure the right understanding, right feeling in us. Now in the first course on UHV, we investigated into the basic human desire, the human aspiration, and we identified it as continuity of happiness. But, and we had concluded that in order to ensure continuous happiness, we need to develop three things. So one thing is right understanding in the self, then right feeling and right thought that is also to be ensured in the self and then competence or right living with the world outside. So competence or right living includes our behavior, our work, our participation in the larger order society. And this is something that we need to develop. Now, doing this, we'll see that what is to be understood rightly. So the whole existential reality, right from the self to the entire existence. So the self has to be understood. The body has to be understood. The coexistence of self and body has to be understood. Then family as a natural organization has to be understood. The relationship there in the family needs to be understood. In the society, the nature, including all the four orders. And finally, the whole nature submerged in space, making the existence that has to be understood. And this is going to be ensured in the self by the self. Now, based on this understanding, we have right feeling and right thought. And what is that? So we have the right feeling and right thought of relationship, harmony and coexistence. So as we develop the right understanding, we are able to awaken ourselves to the contemplation of relationship, understanding of harmony and realization of coexistence. 
and our feelings and thoughts get guided by this. As we go along, we'll try to explore this in much more detail while we discuss the activities of the self. And then what we get as an outcome is the competence for right living. So in the self, we need to live in relationship, harmony and coexistence with the world outside. So when we are interacting with the human being in the form of behavior, so that has to be leading to mutual happiness, isn't it? This is something that we naturally aspire for. So this is something that we naturally aspire for. Similarly, in work, when we interact with the rest of nature, we'd like to have mutual prosperity. So enrichment with, of the rest of nature and the feeling of prosperity ensured in the self. And similarly, when we go to participate in the larger order in the entire nature, so that has to lead to fulfillment of the human goal. And we'll see how the fulfillment of the human goal at a personal level leads to participation in the undivided society and universal human order leading to human tradition. But essentially, we are getting the inputs through lectures. And what we'll do in these exercises, we'll try to observe it directly, starting from the self. So our focus in these exercises would be like once we are able to set the self right, we will be able to live in harmony within and also be able to live in harmony with the world outside. And setting the self right again would mean that we need to awaken the higher activities of the self. So we'll see that there are two blocks of activities in the self. One is block B1 where we have the higher level activities and then block B2 where we have the lower level activities. And we are presently operational in block B2 in the dimension of imagination and we need to work for right understanding. So our major focus in this course would be on ensuring the right understanding and right feeling and right thought and right understanding would mean, as you said, of the existential reality. So we are saying that we need to understand the self. So you got to learn about activities of the self through the lectures. Now, can you observe those activities directly? Can you observe the sensation reaching the self? So can you observe the activities of the self? Can you observe the testing in the self, the selection in the self, the analyzing and comparing the self, the imaging in the self? And that would, and that would mean to observe the desire, thought and expectation in the self, to observe the feelings in the self, isn't it? Similarly, our interaction with the body. So the whole thing has to be understood through direct observation. And when we have this, then we have the right feeling and thought of relationship, harmony and coexistence. So this is our basic goal, our major focus, what we are trying to accomplish through these exercises. So to live with fulfillment, we need to understand and to understand, we need to see, to observe and to see or to observe, we need to pay attention, to be mindful. So essentially what we have to do, we have to be mindful. We have to observe. We have to pay attention. Now, what would be the object of attention? This is something that we we'll discuss. This is something that we'll discuss. So in these exercises, we are paying attention to see, to understand, and ultimately to live with fulfillment. And for that only we are observing the reality. You see that we tend to make mistakes in living with a reality that we do not understand. So if I have to live with the other human being and I do not understand what a human being is, how one human being is related to the other human being then we are bound to make mistakes. For example, we tend to make mistakes in living in relationship. We do not understand relationship, isn't it? So if I do not understand some reality and I have to live with that reality. So if I have to live with some reality and I do not understand that reality, so will I not make mistakes? Of course I will. And that's how we can see that the only thing that is to be done to live the right way is to understand the existence as it is. Isn't it? If I understand the existence as it is, I will not make mistakes in interacting with other units in the nature. So there are two important aspects while paying attention. One is the object of attention and the second one is the process of paying attention. So we'll see what would be the object of attention. So as we said that in exercise one, we have one object of attention and in exercise two, there is another object of attention. And the process of paying attention remains the same, isn't it? So there are two important aspects while paying attention. One is the object of attention. So there are two important aspects while paying attention, the object of attention and the process of paying attention. So what is the object of attention? So whatever is to be understood, to be lived with. So I need to understand myself. So I am an object of attention, isn't it? I need to understand the other human being. I need to understand the rest of nature. 
So the object of attention is consciousness as well as material. So in exercise one, we are trying to understand the consciousness and in exercise two, we are trying to understand the material. So the object of attention would be this way. If you look at the process of paying attention, it is just to be aware, to evaluate without any reaction. So we'll start by being aware and we'll avoid evaluation to begin with. And then we'll go to evaluate and then we'll try to see the things as they are. One thing to be taken care of is no need to react. Okay, you just need to observe. So we have to understand all that we live with, the self, the body, the family, the society, the nature, and ultimately the entire existence. So ultimately we have to understand the entire existence. In the first course on UHV, we have seen that existence is coexistence. That is units are there. So we'll try to understand the consciousness, the material and the coexistence space. So you can see that in the nature, there are only two kinds of units, consciousness and material, and all these units are submerged in space. And this is all that has to be understood. So by way of doing these exercises, you'll see that exercise one is to understand the consciousness in detail. Exercise two is to understand the material, body being an example in detail. And we'll briefly touch upon exercise three, which is for understanding the coexistence by step. So when we go to the last step of exercise two, we'll touch upon this, we'll not go into details of this. So this is what we are going to do in our exercises. Now, as we have discussed earlier, and we, and we will be discussing in detail here again, that existence is units submerged in space. So the units are there, space is there, the space is all pervading, units are limited in size. And units are of two kinds, material and consciousness. So body is one example of material units. The self is there as a consciousness unit. And when you talk about space, so it is there and the coexistence is there, isn't it? Now, if you look at the sequence to observe, since I am the seer, I am the one who is going to know, I am the one who is going to realize, I am the one who is going to see. So we start with the self. So this is the first object of attention. So if you look at exercise one, we are trying to observe the self, that is the consciousness is observing the consciousness. In exercise two, we are observing the material, that is the body. And in exercise three, we'll try to observe the space, the coexistence. And how do we go about it? So we start by observing the distance between two units. Now, how do you say that there are two units? Because there is space between these two units, isn't it? So when you observe the distance between two units, you are able to see that, yes, something is there, which is a reality, and this is a space. Then we can observe the relationship between two units. But this is something that we are going to detail upon only in exercise three, we will not detail upon here in exercises one and two. So we'll start with exercise one and then we'll go to exercise two. Okay? We'll not be touching, we'll not be doing exercise three right now. Okay. Now the next point is to see that who is the seer, who is observing, who is the observer. Now I am the self, you are the self, isn't it? And we are coexisting with the body. And there's a part of the body called as I. So who is ultimately the seer, the self or the body? That is the eyes. What do you think? So ultimately, who is the seer? Who is seeing? Who is observing? Is it the self or the eyes? So we can see that it is the self who is the seer. This is something that we elaborate upon also in the following lectures. So the self is the seer, the observer, the body, eyes for an example, is being used as an instrument, as and when required. So from the eyes, I get some sensation, right? And I utilize the sensation as per the need. I also choose when to get the sensation and when not to get the sensation. So ultimately it is not the eyes which see, it is the self, the consciousness which is observing and utilizing the eyes, which is a part of the body as instrument. This is something to take note. So there are three exercises to be taken care of. One is seeing the self by the self. The second is seeing the body by the self and the third is seeing the coexistence by the self. And when you say seeing the self by the self, the consciousness is observing the consciousness. 
when we are trying to observe the body essentially if you see the consciousness is observing the material and when you go to see the coexistence by the self so we can start by and when the self is observing the coexistence so it is the self which is looking at the submergence of nature and space and to begin with we start by observing the distance between the self and the body and we observe the relationship between the self and the body so we can observe the distance between two units and we'll see that self is a unit body is a unit and there is a distance between self and the body so i am observing the body and i am observing how i am related with the body and there are two units here so essentially we are observing the distance between these two units and then gradually we are we are able to observe the relationship between these two units so these are three exercises but in this course we'll be taking up exercise 1 and 2 and towards the end of exercise 2 we'll just touch upon exercise 3 now if you look at what we are paying attention to so it may be the case that we are paying attention to something outward okay with which we are related and there is some assumption about the relationship with the outward thing and based on that assumption we are recognizing and fulfilling so mostly we are used to paying attention outside to some physiochemical entity to some other human being to some unit of nature and if you do not pay attention to yourself if you do not pay attention to what is there and if you do not pay attention inward if you are not able to pay your attention to the contemplation of relationship or understanding of harmony then we are preconditioned and with that preconditioning with that assumption we try to relate to the world outside so the self has the power to observe it can either observe outward or inward so when it is outward then we are paying attention to something outside isn't it no from now from outward we have to come inward so inward would mean that i am paying attention to the self so i am working to ensure knowing so i have assuming in me i have the potential to know and i am trying to know so the right process would be that i start paying attention inward and with the understanding the knowing that i assure within myself i am able to pay attention outside so if you look at the process it has to be looking within first and then in relationship with the outer world so that the knowing is ensured the assuming is set right and then accordingly we are recognizing and fulfilling this is the right process similarly if you look at the power of the self so if you pay attention inward and inward would mean that i am paying attention to my imagination my desires my thoughts my expectations the conditionings that i am carrying within me the dependence on sensation for happiness that is there in me the potential to know that is there in me i am paying attention inside isn't it in fact when there was pandemic due to covid 19 one proverb that was making the rounds is if you cannot go outside go inside so yes we have to go inside we have to observe the world inside we have to observe our imagination and you will see that and you will see that your happiness or unhappiness is owing to the world inside to your imagination your thoughts your feelings your desires isn't it and that's why it is very important and it is very simple also so it is very simple to pay attention to yourself because you are there with yourself all the time and it is important also so if you start paying attention inward then you get the clarity there and then you are able to fulfill your relationship with the outer world also so if you pay attention inward and with that attention you pay outward as and when required okay so you are able to rightly relate to the outward things otherwise you are conditioned in some particular manner and then you keep on reacting based on your assumptions so you have to pay attention inward as well as outward but first inward and then outward isn't it so exercise 1 essentially is observing the self by the self and that is looking within so you are there with yourself and you have to pay attention to yourself isn't it this is exercise one let me say that this is just one way of looking within and not the only way so the goal is to look within isn't it and this is one proposal 
of how you can go ahead looking within. So this is not the only way. If you look at <coughs> so if you look at the human civilization and its history, people have tried to look inward in so many ways, isn't it? So the steps mentioned in this exercise are one possible set of steps. And let me say at this juncture that this is not only the set of steps. In fact, as you go along, you'll see that you can break a single step into multiple steps or you can club multiple steps into single step depending upon your competence, isn't it? So for these observations, do I need to use the eyes to see the self? So no, I do not need my eyes to see the self, my imagination. So you can give rest to the eyes. You can keep the eyes in a comfortable position, maybe open or closed or half open, half closed, whatever is comfortable with you. Only that you need to be comfortable enough to pay attention to yourself. Similarly, in this process, do I need to take any work from the body? So no. So to see my feeling, I do not need to take any work from the body. So you can give rest to the body. So you can keep it in any comfortable position, in any posture which is comfortable. But make sure that you do not go to sleep, isn't it? So take some posture where you can pay attention to your imagination, your thoughts. And you can keep it in a posture that suits you. So now let us go into the process of observing. So if you look at the complete exercise, there are seven steps here. And we'll go over these steps one by one. Uh, to begin with, you can start paying attention in some part of the day for maybe a few minutes. But gradually, you have to see how you can keep yourself, how you can keep observing yourself every moment. So I'll detail upon these steps uh, as we go along. So as you go along, I will be elaborating on all these steps. But step one is merely to be aware. So you have to observe your imagination and we just have to observe without any reaction. Then you have to see that the feeling that you have is naturally acceptable to you or not. We want it to be continuous or not. Then you have to see whether you are comfortable with your feeling or not. In fourth step, you have to observe who decided the feeling that you have at this moment. Then in step five, we have to observe the basis on which you decide that feeling. In step six, you have to ask yourself which feelings are naturally acceptable to you. And there you have to make a decision. And if you are able to see that the feeling of relationship, harmony and coexistence are naturally acceptable to you, then in step seven, you try to ensure these feelings in you. And once you are able to do this, then you try to ensure that every decision that you make is based on these feelings. So it is important to note that when you are able to understand relationship, harmony and coexistence in its completeness, then you are able to decide your feeling, your thought accordingly, and you are always comfortable within your in a state of continuous happiness. This is our coveted state for which we are doing these exercises. So as we go along, I will be elaborating upon all these steps. So in today's practice session, we took a look at the two exercises that we are going to do in our practice sessions. And we had introduction to the process of observing and also the object that we have to observe, the object of attention. So you have to start doing this. And as we go along, we'll be elaborating upon, we will be elaborating upon all the seven steps which you can do at your end. Thank you.